Hello again. Well, it's been a while, uh, mainly due to the fact that we've had probably the longest stretch of bad weather with regards to astronomy in the UK that I've ever seen. Um, that's been caused by the jet stream not behaving itself and not moving up how it should do and, you know, various other factors. But now apparently it is moving up and we should start to see a break in this weather. In the meantime, I've got probably the cleanest eyepieces, the most polished lenses and the most collimated Newtonians that I've, I've ever had. Uh, which actually brings me on to what this video is about this time. Um, what I'm going to show you is a product from a company called Farpoint Astro. Now, Farpoint Astro are based in Sacramento in California. and We don't actually see much of their kit in the UK. And that's a shame, really, because it is a very, very nicely made kit. Uh, I have one of the Los Mandy bars on, on my own telescope, uh, you know, do, sort of dovetail. Uh, but they also make sort of saddle clamps and various other engineered pieces of equipment for astronomy. And like I say, it's very, very nicely made, but not only that, the price is right. So, you know, I would like to see more Farpoint kit in the UK. Uh, which brings me onto this, which is actually the, the newest product that Farpoint have done. And, and it's a brand new product. It's actually not even available in the UK at the moment. And this is an auto collimator. Now, you may never have heard of an auto collimator before. Um, you know, and the name suggests that you just drop it in and it collimates your telescope for you, which isn't the case, which I wish it was. Um, but this is how it comes, and it actually has a cap on the end. Now, when you look at it, it looks a little bit like a two inch sight tube. The difference is that on the inside, it has a very, very high quality glass mirror in there. Um, very similar to the sort of quality that you would get on your primary mirror in, uh, in a Newtonian. Now, what you do with this is you collimate your scope how you would normally do using sort of a Cheshire collimator or your lasers or you know your other little things that you have in your, in your magic bag. Um, and get your, your telescope as well collimated as you can do. You then put this into your focuser and you look down it. Now what this does is it works a little bit like if you've been in a hall of mirrors in a fairground, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the effect where there's sort of two mirrors that aren't quite parallel to each other. And if you stand in the right spot, you see hundreds of reflections of yourself, so you know, going off into infinity. Um, you know, as if one wasn't enough. My wife thinks one of me is plenty. Um, but <laughs> this works in exactly the same way. If those two mirrors in the Hall of Mirrors were placed parallel to each other, you would see the reflections of you merge into one because all the light is now traveling parallel. Um, you know, you just get the one reflection. So if you put this into your focuser in your Newtonian and look down it, what you will see is multiple reflections of the, the center spot on your primary. Uh, you'll usually actually see four of them. Now, it's a very, very sensitive method of collimation, this. And it's so sensitive that you can even tell uh, which directions you need to move your secondary in without actually having to slacken anything off. Just put the auto collimator in, look down it, and you'll see, like I said, these reflections, four reflections usually, of your center spot. Now, they will be in, if you've collimated well enough using your Cheshire, they'll be in what we call a close jumble, which means, you know, you've got the circle, you'll see the circle of the, of the mirror, and you'll see these four reflections sort of scattered about a little bit. Now, if you then put your hand onto the spider of your scope and just apply pressure without slacking anything off it will give you a clue as to which directions you need to move it into it is very very precise and very very sensitive now as a rule generally if the reflections are in a line going along the length of the scope then you need to tilt the mirror to just bring them back in again if the reflections are going across the axes of the scope then you need to twist the mirror, which will again will stack them on top of each other. Now obviously you'll get sort of a mixture of the two, but it just gives you a clue as to the directions that you've got to move in. It's actually, although it sounds difficult, it's a very, very easy method. The, the hardest part of it is just being fine enough, you know, just you, only very, very slight adjustments to that mirror will start to stack those reflections. Now what happens is, when you stack those reflections, you will also see that the the the, the area of light around the center where you see these sort of you know we're actually looking at the mirrors will darken the reason being that as the mirrors become parallel less light from from sort of around the sides can get in so the reflections will appear darker and you'll see a visible darkening of the mirror as the reflections stack once you've done that what you need to do then is realign your primary mirror because as we've said in very in previous videos 
you've got a relationship between your secondary and your primary that are very very close so you sort of move one you need to move the other until eventually they're both absolutely lined up so use a laser and um, and a barlow so using the barlow laser method on your primary mirror next and line your primary up then put your auto collimator back in again and look through it and you will see that the reflections have probably moved out a little bit again just align your secondary and then go back to your primary until eventually maybe maybe two maybe three sort of iterations of, of that process you'll get where your, your primary is aligned and also your reflections are nicely stacked and um, like I said it is a very very precise and accurate method of collimation this you won't collimate your scope any better um, than by using one of these if you then drop a Cheshire in or, or you know your, your laser or anything it will be absolutely bang on and textbook you know like you see on the on the websites that are showing you how it should look through a through a Cheshire it'll be absolutely perfect um, and in fact it, it becomes even more important because the faster Newtonians are starting to become very very popular now um, so are the F4 Newtonians and they're very very intolerant of, of collimation errors so it just helps you again to, to make everything as accurate as you possibly can and disadvantages wise there's only one and that is that it's going to cost you more money you see what you'll do is you'll get your auto collimator and you'll put it in your focuser and you'll line everything up and then you'll start doing what everybody does and so you know playing about and touching things and tweaking things while you're looking through it and what you'll notice is that, that if you've got just a standard focuser on your scope just touch your focuser in sort of on any of the sides and you'll see those reflections sort of jump out and then jump back in again and it, it just shows the inadequacies of, of more sort of standard focusers and then you're going to start looking on websites and you're looking at, at, at barter steel tracks and and feather touches and moonlight focuses and looking at the price of them and then you're thinking of ideas of what you can do to to put your wife in a good mood so that you can get a new focus of your scope um, you know so it just goes on and on and on really um, now these aren't available in the UK at the moment they are going to be available very very soon at modern astronomy um, so you know if you once you've seen this video if you decide you want one and I, I have to say it's brilliant and, and you do want one especially if you've got a faster Newtonian you, you need one in fact you know they really are that good I'm very very impressed with it um, if you contact modern astronomy if they don't have them they will probably give you an ETA for, for when they're going to get them and I will put up the URL for uh, modern astronomy on, on this video uh, so if you've got as I do if you're a sufferer from OCD which is obsessive collimation disorder um, then it's definitely a must-have piece of kit um, I've got the Quattro, the new Quattro 10 inch uh, F4 scope and this, uh, well, I thought I was good at collimating but this, it, it just, like I say, it blew me away, it's just that good. Um, and that's about it for this one, so once again, thanks for watching.